Hi, this is Nate Miller from Proving Ground. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process for using Excel and Dynamo to create a Revit space list. To start things off, I've opened up a blank Revit file. I'm going to go to the Room command and go to Place a Room. You'll notice that if I go to this Room drop-down, the only option I have is to create a new room. I can use Dynamo and Excel to populate this room list with spaces from Excel that I can then select from as I model. I'm going to go to the Add-ins tab and launch Dynamo from within Revit. Launching Dynamo from within Revit is important because it allows us access to the Revit API that we can use to perform transactions such as creating spaces in the model. I'm going to use the definition I started in the last exercise which parsed a space list out of Excel. When I activate this definition it's going to launch Excel and show me a table of space information. I'm going to minimize this Excel file and go into Dynamo. We can see that this definition is parsing uh, Excel information and giving me access to individual columns that I can use to create my spaces. The node that I want to use to create my spaces can be found in the Lunchbox package. If I expand Lunchbox and then expand the Revit category, you'll see an elements, a set of element components. The top of the list is the create room by name and number. The create room by name and number node allows me to use a list of information coming in from places like Excel to create and populate a space list inside of Revit. The first input is a toggle, which is an on and off switch that tells this component to calculate and create spaces. So I can use a Boolean uh, node to control that toggle. I'm going to leave it set to false for right now. I can then supply in a list of room numbers. I'm going to use this component which is reading out the ID column to use for my number list. I can then use my name list from the item index 3 to inform the name input. After I've supplied these inputs, I can set the toggle to true. This is then going to perform a transaction on my model. I'm going to minimize Dynamo now and go back into Revit. I'm going to go find my room command, and when I activate that command and I go back to my room list, you can see that the room list has now been populated with each of the entries from the Excel file. I'm going to select this first one, Academic Offices, and place that element in my model. You can see that this particular room has the property of academic offices as the name and the ID of one. If I compare that back to my Excel list, you can see that Dynamo and Excel have read that information into Revit and have populated the ID column and the room name column. But I can also use Dynamo to uh, populate information about department, sub-department, and area into my model. I'm going to minimize Excel again, and I'm also going to delete this space out of the model. Inside of Dynamo, I can start to use some of these other parameters um, and begin modifying the, the room parameters with this information from Excel. So for example, if I wanted all of my rooms to have their department information assigned, I can do that through Dynamo using this particular list of information coming from Excel. There is a node called set parameter by name. Set parameter by name will allow us to reference the room elements uh, from within Revit, choose the parameter name that we want to assign, and then use this list from Excel to assign that value to the parameter. In this case, I want to assign my department parameter to all of my rooms. You'll see that after the rooms have been created, we are getting access to all the individual room elements in the model. So I'm going to pass this room output into the element input. I then need to specify the parameter name. In this case, I'm going to use a string value, and the string value is going to refer to department. The value is going to come out of this department uh, list from Excel. So I'm going to pass that in 
the value. And it's going to perform a transaction on my model. Um, it will return a list of rooms, but all of these rooms now have been modified with that department value. So I'm going to minimize Dynamo again. I'm going to go to place a room. And I'm going to place my academic offices again. So I'm going to place that in my model. Then I'm going to select on that object. And you can see that underneath the department field in the properties, I've now populated that element with lab A. And this has done that for all of the spaces that are currently existing in my model and in that space list. So if I wanted to go through and populate each of my rooms with all the different parameter information in this, I could do so by using that node for set element parameter by name. So I'm going to continue this theme and start assigning other parameters to my model. You can see that from Excel we're also getting subdepartment information and some program area information that I can start assigning to my room objects. Out of the box, rooms don't have a subdepartment property or uh, a program area property outside of the area value that it calculates when you place a room. So in order for these parameters to be assigned to my element, I need to make sure that the rooms have these parameters in place. So I'm going to minimize Dynamo again, and under the Manage tab, I'm going to find the Project Parameters command. And I'm going to go in and just add in a couple of project parameters. I'm going to create one for subdepartment, and I'm going to make sure that this subdepartment parameter gets assigned to the rooms category. I also know that this is going to be some text-based information, so I need to make sure that the type of parameter is set to text. And I want to group this parameter under identity data. I also want to make sure that this is in fact an instance parameter because each of the rooms are going to have different subdepartment values. I'm now going to add another parameter to my room object for program area. This parameter is going to store the desired area that's coming out of Excel. This will allow me to, in schedules and, and elsewhere in the model, begin to do a comparison between the programmed area that's in Excel and the calculated area of the room after it's been placed. So I'm going to name this program area. I'm going to make sure this is set to an instance parameter. The type of parameter is going to be an area parameter. And I'm also going to group this under identity data. And then finally, I need to make sure this is also assigned to the room element. So with those parameters created, I'm going to go back into Dynamo and start using the set parameter by name to instantiate this information into my model. So I'm going to find another set element parameter by name. And what I want to do is also start to chain these components together so there's a clear order of operations to my transaction. First it's creating the element, then it's modifying the department parameter. I'm then going to modify the subdepartment parameter. So I'm going to pass the output element from this node into the input element of this new set parameter by name. Then I'm going to create a string for subdepartment. And I'm going to make sure that string matches the way I typed it into my parameter um, in Revit. So I have to make sure it's case sensitive and so on. I'm then going to feed in my subdepartment parameters into the value. And you can see I've successfully returned my room information. There's no warnings on this component, meaning that transaction has succeeded. Finally, I'm going to do the same operation for area. So I'm going to find a new set parameter by name. I'm going to feed my elements from the subdepartment into this new uh, set parameter by name node. And the parameter name I'm going to use in this case is going to be the program area. So I'm going to find a new string. and then I'm going to feed in my area values. 
and no warnings have happened on that component, which means I've now performed another transaction on my rooms. So if I'm going to minimize Dynamo and go back to my academic offices object that I placed before, you'll see that it is now uh, it now contains subdepartment information and this program area information that's coming in from Excel. So that's basically it. If I go back and look through my uh, Dynamo definition, you can see we now have a full workflow for reading information in from Excel, parsing that information in Dynamo, and then assigning that information to create rooms, and then modify those room parameters with other properties.